Welcome to another episode of the Taco Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about communication and communication with our children, or as you can use some of these as an adult to communicate you know, with the world around you. Now, a little bit of background. Our son is, you know, has a autism. He is on the autism spectrum, and he is what they call speech delayed. He has barriers to com- of communication with the world, and these are different things that we have used to help him with actual communication with the world around him. The first item that you will you'll see all these items here on the screen. The first item is our version of what we call the PEX book. PEX, P-E-X, is actually a brand name of a you know, communication device that school systems and you know, different you know, developmental you know, centers around the United States and probably around the world as well use for communication. But this is our version. I made it with duct tape, a three ring binder, one entire kit, and as you make them, you can start off with one kit of little Valcro, you know, stickers. They have a sticker on one side and the Valcro on the other side. And each and every one of these pictures are laminated. We did that because, well, kids are messy and it's a lot easier to wipe them off with a sponge. So this is a three ring binder that has pictures that are all, they're little strips, they are, they're Valcroed on, and then he can take them off and put them on a board at the bottom and then be able to put the pictures together to form sentences of needs, wants, and things that he needs to communicate with the world. He may not be able to say, or you may not be able to say, or your child may not be able to say, that they need a glass of water or they need to use the bathroom. But there are little tiles that they can take off and put on the the little board at the bottom, which comes off as well, where they can communicate that need or desire. But total cost of the entire thing, lamination, the three ring binder, the duct tape, all of it, 100% of everything. We're talking Valcro, all of it from the craft store. All right. I paid $11.86 to make this. The actual PEX books that they sell are upwards of $40, $45 a piece. I made this fairly cheap and it worked. And we used it for the first two years until we got this device. This is the Apple tablet. And what it's showing is a computer tablet version of the same program. It has the same tiles. It has everything that can be put together to be able to form a sentence for a child, but is on an actual electronic device. But I understand not everybody has a pile full of money to throw at to buy an actual device like this to buy a tablet, to keep up with the programs, you know, and everything else for it. That's why I didn't have the money at the time. That's why I made the, you know, the PEX book myself. Simple to do. All you need is a copier center and lamination sheets that already, you don't even need a heated laminate. They have the sheets that already laminate themselves. Once you, you know, you pull them apart, they're sticky and then they laminate themselves. Heck, you could do the same thing that I did with the first book. You could do that with clear packing tape and if you don't have a laminator. Make it even cheaper. But the, this is the, the Apple tablet. It, um, but additionally, what this the, the Apple tablet has is the ability to actually, can, you can hit a button on it and it will speak for them. It'll, it'll read out the sentence or the tablet, you know, the tiles that they put together to communicate that way. Next here is the Fire Tablet. Now, this is the Amazon Fire Tablet. I bought this. This is a refurb um, Amazon Fire Tablet uh, because we've gone through many, many, many of these. I think this is his fifth or sixth one. He was taking them out of the actual covers and, well, he destroyed them in one way or another. A couple of them he threw in the bathtub you know, or took him in the bath with him. Uh, others, he, you know, it's like, it, but it happens just like that. A tip that I saw on the Fathering Autism YouTube channel, you should look him up, really great content, but Fathering Autism, a tip that he, he uh, showed on one of his videos was 
you put the tablet in there and you use a couple drops of super glue on the inside of the actual cover itself so you're super gluing the tablet in there so he can't you know your child can't take the device out of the actual protection case itself that's a great piece of advice i never actually thought about that until i saw that video and i was like darn it you know i wish i would have known that all right moving on the next item here this is just a whiteboard from crayola it's a simple device that where he can write out, you know, and maybe he doesn't spell, you know, 100%. Maybe I don't spell 100% correctly all the time. But it's a, you know, a simple little device with, you know, a wipeable, you know, a erasable marker. You can write out different things, you know, form sentences where he just writes in the, I need, and then you make a line, uh, you know, that's blank and he can fill in the blank. Maybe he, you know, he, he, your child will only be able to express like the first three letters, you know, A, P, P. Well, I mean, that you can figure out from there. He probably wants an apple, but, or I need, and then, you know, maybe he able to write, you know, potty or, you know, or bathroom or, you know, whatever, you know, in the device. And you can use a whiteboard, erasable, uh, total cost for those. I bought that one at the dollar store. It cost a dollar. That came with one free black you know, um, erasable marker, but you can buy additional colors for, you know, and to be able to fill in. And, and if, when you're not using it for that, they can draw on it and it's easily erasable. So you're not using and cutting down trees to, you know, to you know, waste more uh, space in the landfill. But whiteboard, moving on. This next device is kind of unique. I've never actually seen it anywhere else except for, you know, when I purchased it online. Now, this thing looks like a monitor to a computer, but it actually has a built-in light on it, and both sides of it are a screen. One is a with a silver background, and the opposite side has a black background. So you can buy glow-in-the-dark markers, like, you know, neon colors, and you write right on it. It can lay flat on a table. The legs turn inward, so it's flat like a tablet or you can stand it up like a monitor and you can write on it that way and it, it uses just any old generic dry eraser you know markers can be used on the on the silver side on the opposite side though you do need the you know the neon markers that show up with a black background but it's got a built-in light in it that runs off of one nine volt battery the entire thing. There are other versions out there that run off of double or triple A's, but this one runs off of a nine volt battery and you erase it with just a, um, a washcloth or a tissue you know, with a little bit of water on it. But he uses it all the time to um, you know, not only draw you know, pictures, um, but he also uses it to, as a communication device so he can put it on his lap and it's big enough so it, you know, it's sturdy and then he can write on it that way. Now that fold crease line you see down the middle that was my fault um, trying to take the, the packaging out because originally it came with a silver and a black or it came with a red with the opposite side green so I was trying to remove it and I bent it you know that was me not even my child I, I did that crease next one we're going back in time to something that you know each and every one of us probably had as a child ourselves you know I know I did definitely as a child this is the good old speak and spell, ladies and gentlemen. They still make them to the day, and they're made exactly the same way as they were when you were a kid. Um, you know, spelling, games, everything right on it, you know, but it helps, you know, with the interaction and helps them communicate. They can spell a word, and then it speaks for them. Speak and spell, all right? You know, or spell and speak, whichever you, you, you prefer to call it. These are sold on Amazon. I don't have any affiliate links for any of this stuff because I'm not making money from any of this. I'm just giving you the information that I think that so many people out there are forgetting that they that they you, know, you can use to help communicate with a child. Not really a you know, a communication device at all. But for those who are you know who have children who are on the autism spectrum, they have problems with you know understanding facial expressions. This is a styrofoam mannequin head that we bought for $10 at a craft store locally. It's a national chain, so you can probably find these everywhere. 
They're made for putting wigs on or doing whatever you want with them. But we use it as a communication device and to help him also understand, you know, facial expressions. Let me tell you a little bit of the background on this and why we actually use this. During his actual, my son, he goes to an occupational therapist and once a week. And in that actual class that he goes to, you know, it's one-on-one -on -one and with a group of kids. They use a, it's kind of like a Mr. Potato Head where they can put smiley faces on or glasses or, you know, you know, like a Mr. Potato Head, but it helps them express how they're feeling and the different emotions that they feel. So, you know, the Mr. Potato Head, they're like, what's this? It's a smiling Mr. Potato Head. What's this? This is a sad Mr. Potato Head. Well, we thought, how can we do something like that, you know, that's more realistic, you know, or something where it's a lot larger, especially for smaller children, small items like the Mr. Potato Head are a little bit hard for them to be able, you know, dexterity wise, you know, to be able to use as a communication. This one, as you see, has a big old mustache on it, but he can put a beard on it. He can make a happy face. He can make a frowny face. He can put glasses on it or no glasses on it. He can put different hair on it. We, you know, we, it was $10 for the styrofoam head, but each additional item that we bought along the way, all again, coming from the craft store. All right. All of this stuff was sold there, you know, this national craft store. You can find the stuff on Amazon, whatever, and it's all stickers. You know, that it sticks on with a little piece of, you know, um, peeling, you know, like sticker tape on the backside. So it sticks on and you can put different facial expressions on it, make it happy, make it sad, make it, you know, uh, surprise, whatever. All of it's interchangeable. But helps him actually with the communication, understanding, and we, and as we we you know we he puts the different faces on, we talk, communicate with them, and say this is a happy face, this is a sad face, and then we change the face and then ask him, what is the face you're seeing here on the mannequin? Is it a happy face? Is it a sad face? Is it a mad face? But it helps them with the, you know, understanding, you know, and building that understanding of what the, you know, the facial expression is actually showing them. Next, bookshelf. Bookshelf of books. I have been all over the United States of America. And I've been to, well, I would say literally hundreds of different used bookstores or thrift stores. Children's books like Dr. Seuss, you know, and the Bernstein Bears, you know, and so on are fairly cheap. My local Goodwill sells them between a dollar and a dollar and a half per book. As you can see, these books have all seen their better days. Then again, they are children's books for children. They're not collectible items I'm putting away, you know, for the next generation. These are books that he can read, and if he destroys them, or whatever it may happen to them, they're only a dollar. But we read. We make a point to read to him, and have him read to us. It helps build that structure of understanding. Even if he can't communicate it all to us, he, you know, we, we point to a word in a book and, and have him try to sound out the word. You know, and, and it helps reinforce that communication and the ability. It helps move along the communication skills. But we always, every single day, it doesn't matter how busy we are, how tired we are. You, in, in your life, may find the same thing. Just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Lay down, sit down, whatever it might be. And read a book to them. Just them being able to hear you communicate and speak out the actual and sound out the words within a book. And you can you don't have to start with these books. You can buy the board books that are meant for you know for younger children. Even if your child is older, they may still you know need that communication and hear someone to be able to sit down and communicate the words out to them. But reading is important. Next. Home PC. This is a computer that was built in 1999. Yes, it's a cheap old computer, but 
at the same time, it still works. We bought this used off on, you know, a local um, computer shop. They were, you know, they buy them and they refurbish them and they sell them for, you know, between $50 to $100 for the, you know, the computer, the cheap monitor. And then we went to Big Lots and bought the keyboard and mouse. You know, I think the keyboard and mouse were $10 a piece. So $20 for that. The, you know, computer, maybe $100 with the monitor. So we're heading to 150 bucks, maybe total for everything. And it's, you know, you can get the, the same programs. And I'm going to put a link in the description to a website that has a lot of helpful different links, you know, to different companies that make devices for, you know, and ways of communicate with, with children who have issues, you know, um, either they have ADHD or Down syndrome or they have autism. But it rates them on a scale of one to five on how good an ease of access they are. And you can click on, you know, a lot of the different things they have. You can click on and say, okay, this is the different programs they're talking about. And it will tell you what the costs are involved in it. Or you can, you know, copy and paste the, you know, the name of that you know, actual program and then look it up on the internet yourself. Additionally, Something else that we have we started from a very young age when my son was just a toddler is we started with sign language, and we knew because we knew right then and there that you know he had um, autism well before he was you know officially diagnosed you know being on the spectrum. We knew that you know, that he had autism. You you just know. You know when your when your child just not picking up you know um, things at the same rate that other children are, you know your child. I mean I can't explain it any other way, but we started with sign language with our son, and it was a way for him to communicate, and he communicates really effectively with sign language. He may not be able to speak it, but he can write it. He he can sign it out to us. And that is something that my son has, has picked up on, and your child may be able to pick up on as well. Or it, even in you, if you have communication issues, you may be able to, you know, to use sign language yourself to communicate with the world around you, even if it's things that are simple. You know, flashcards. I know of an, an adult who has a communication issue, and he bought a packet of index cards, and he cut them in half lengthwise. So they're, you know, shorter and he keeps them in his breast pocket of, of his, you know, shirt and he takes them with them, you know, and he's written out little phrases on them. That's another, you know, tip that, you know, he's an adult and he's trying to make his way in this world and he needs to communicate with the world. But that's something, you know, that we, you know, maybe when my son is older, we'll, we'll use something like that if we feel the need that he will benefit from. So just wanted to show share with you today communication devices for those who are out there you know in the world if you have and you know of any others i would love to see it in the comment section below you know tell us is there something else that you use that you found that is effective in communicating with the world that we haven't been able to share if if uh, you know um you you do and we find that you know it's something that would be beneficial we'll definitely give you a shout out on the next taco podcast episode in the meantime, ladies and gentlemen, you all have a terrific week ahead. <music>